ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम सरबजीत कौर एंड विद मी इज वी सी प्रमोद द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी सेज रिफॉर्म्स विद कन्विक्शन एंड इंसेंटिव हैव इम्प्रूव द लाइफ ऑफ पुअर एंड द मिडिल क्लास एंड इम्प्रूव द ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस सेंटर स्टेट भागीदारी हेल्प द स्टेट्स रेज एन एक्स्ट्रा रुपीज 1.06 लाख करोड़ इन 2020 थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन अमिट फाइनेंशियल क्रंच अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड नेशन टोटल कोविड वैक्सीनेशन कवरेज क्रॉसेज ट्वेंटी नाइन पॉइंट फोर जीरो करोड़ मार्क रिकवरी रेट इम्प्रूव टू नाइन्टी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट हेल्थ मिनिस्टर डॉक्टर हर्षवर्धन सेज मोर देन ट्वेंटी कंट्रीज हैव शोन इंटरेस्ट इन द कोविन प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर हेल्प इन वैक्सीनेशन कैंपेन्स Farooq Abdullah and Mehbooba Mufti to attend tomorrow's all party meeting called by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi. External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar calls for a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire in Afghanistan at UN Security Council. Country receives 31% excess rainfall during this monsoon says IMD. Prime Minister's Mann ki Baat to be broadcast by All India Radio on 27 June. In cricket, India to resume play with overnight score of 64 for 2 against New Zealand in the World Test Championship final at Southampton. And in the Euro Cup soccer, England defeat the Czech Republic 1-0 while Croatia beats Scotland 3-1 to reach the last 16. As the nation gears up for free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years, We advise our listeners to get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow the four simple steps. Wear face mask, maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene and get vaccinated. For any COVID related information and guidance, contact national helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi emphasized that reforms with conviction and incentives have improved the ease of living, especially for the poor and the middle class, ease of doing business and fostered center state bhagidari. The Prime Minister also lauded the states and said they were able to raise an extra 1.06 lakh crores in 2020-21 amid financial crunch across the world. In a blog post in LinkedIn yesterday, Mr. Modi said states were able to raise an extra 1.06 lakh crore rupees in 2020-21. He said this significant increase in availability of resources was made possible by an approach of center state bhagidari. It may be recalled that Prime Minister Narendra Modi had earlier forecast the country's economy will grow rapidly and it will result in overall and equitable prosperity among the people of the country. आने वाले वर्षों में हम अपनी इकोनॉमी के साइज को दो गुना करने का प्रयास करेंगे। हमारे लिए five trillion dollar economy ये महज आंकड़ा नहीं है, बल्कि सामान्य भारतीय को सशक्त करने का माध्यम है। अर्थव्यवस्था दो गुनी होगी, तो हर भारतीय परिवार की आय भी बढ़ेगी। हर ग्लोबल रैंकिंग में आज भारत व्यापक सुधार कर रहा है। वर्ल्ड इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की ग्लोबल इनोवेशन इंडेक्स की रैंकिंग, वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फोरम की ग्लोबल कंपटिटिवनेस इंडेक्स, अंकतार द्वारा लिस्ट किए गए 10 एफडीआई डेस्टिनेशन में भी भारत ने सुधार किया है। ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस में भी हमारा लक्ष्य टॉप 50 देशों में आने का है। इसी का परिणाम है कि आज रिकॉर्ड स्तर पर भारत में फॉरेन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट आ रहा है। In May 2020, as part of the Atmanirbhar Bharat package, government announced that states would be allowed to enhance borrowing for 2020-21. Bharat ke plus global supply chain ko majboot karne ke liye capacity bhi hai, capability bhi hai, aur sabse badi baat reliability bhi hai. Bharat ke plus aaj bahut bada कंज्यूमर बेज है और उसका जितना विस्तार होगा उतना ही ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी को लाभ होगा कि भारत संभावनाओं के साथ साथ 
आत्मविश्वास से भरा हुआ है नई ऊर्जा से भरा हुआ है बीते वर्षो में भारत ने रिफॉर्म्स और इंसेंटिव बेस्ड स्टिम्यूलस पर बहुत जोर दिया है मिस्टर मोदी सेड एन एक्स्ट्रा टू परसेंट ऑफ जी एस डी पी वॉज अलाउड आउट ऑफ विच वन परसेंट वॉज मेड कंडीशनल ऑन द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ सर्टन इकोनॉमिक रिफॉर्म्स ही सेड दिस वॉज अ नज इंसेंटिवाइजिंग द स्टेट टू अडॉप्ट प्रोग्रेसिव पॉलिसीज टू अवेल एडिशनल फंड He added that the results of this exercise are not only encouraging but also run contrary to the notion that there are limited takers for sound economic policies. Union Health Ministry has said that a consistent decline in daily active cases of COVID-19 and further improvement in recovery from infection is being noticed in the country. Addressing media in New Delhi last evening, Secretary in the Health Ministry Rajesh Bhushan said that continuous decline in daily cases is being noticed since India reported a peak with nearly 4 lakh 14000 cases on the 7th of May. He said now almost 90% decline in such cases has been there since the highest reported peak in daily new cases. कुल एक्टिव केसेस की संख्या में भी गिरावट आई है अब देश में केवल छह लाख बासठ हजार पांच सौ इक्कीस एक्टिव केसेस हैं ये डिक्लाइन जिस दिन देश में सैंतीस लाख से ज्यादा एक्टिव केसेस थे उसकी तुलना में ये बयासी प्रतिशत की गिरावट है रिकवरी रेट भी देश में बढ़ रहा है इस समय नाइन्टी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट है जब हमने पीक को देखा था उस समय एटी वन परसेंट रिकवरी रेट था In reply to a query the health secretary said delta variant is found in 80 nations including India he said it is considered a variant of concern he added that delta plus has been found in 9 nations these are US the UK Portugal Switzerland Japan Poland Nepal China and Russia 22 cases of delta plus variant have been found in India Mr Bhushan said 16 of the 22 cases of delta plus variant have been found in Ratnagiri and Jalgaon of Maharashtra and a few cases in Kerala and Madhya Pradesh Union Health Ministry has alerted and advised Maharashtra Kerala and Madhya Pradesh regarding the delta plus variant of covid-19 being found in some districts in these states Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan has communicated to these three states as this variant has been found in genome sequence samples from Ratnagiri and Jalgaon districts of Maharashtra, Palakkad and Pattanamthitta districts of Kerala and Bhopal and Shivpuri districts of Madhya Pradesh. Indian SARS-CoV-2 Genomics Consortium INSACOG is tasked with not just the whole genome sequencing but also for timely giving inputs on appropriate public health response measures. to be adopted by states and UTs Health Minister Dr Harshvardhan has said more than 20 countries have shown interest in the Covin platform for help in the vaccination campaign In a tweet the minister said India will share the success story of Covin on 30th June with the world at a global conference He said this is an answer to those people who raised doubts about the country's vaccination program In another significant achievement India's cumulative covid vaccination coverage has crossed 29.40 crore mark so far a total of 29 crore 40 lakh 42822 doses of covid vaccines have been administered to the beneficiaries union health ministry in a statement said that as the new phase of universalization of covid-19 vaccination commenced from 21st of june more than 51 lakh vaccine doses were administered yesterday as per the 7 pm provisional report the ministry said more than 32 lakh 81000 vaccine doses were administered as first dose and over 71000 vaccine doses were given as second dose in the age group 18 to 44 years yesterday it said cumulatively over 6 crore 55 lakh persons across 37 states and union territories have received their first dose while over 14 lakh 24000 received their second dose since the start of phase 3 of the vaccination drive the health and family welfare ministry has said that the country is registering a significant decline in active covid case loads and fresh cases and the recovery rate has further improved to 96.5% The country registered a total of 42,640 new COVID cases in the last 24 hours. For the first time in 91 days, less than 50,000 new cases were registered. 
A total of 1,167 deaths have also been reported in the country in the last 24 hours, taking the toll to over 3,89,000 across the country. In Bihar, Unlock 3 became effective from today for two weeks with certain restrictions. According to revised guidelines, the government and private offices will function with 100% attendance. Shops and business establishments will open till 7 p.m. on alternative days. Night curfew will continue from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. next morning. Parks and gardens will open from 6 a.m. to 12 noon. Educational institutions will remain closed. Online teaching will continue in educational institutions. In Gujarat, more than 4,50,000 people were vaccinated against COVID-19 yesterday, taking the overall number of doses administered in the state to over 2 crore 30 lakh. Meanwhile, the state reported 135 fresh cases of COVID in the last 24 hours. As many as 612 people were recovered from COVID during the day. A report. The recovery rate of COVID-19 patients in the state stands to 98.15%. All the four mega cities in, in the state, namely Ahmedabad, Suraj, Rajkot and Vadodara, reported less than 30 cases. According to State Health Department, there are now 5,159 active cases of COVID-19 in the state, of which 86 patients are critical. Aparna Kun, AR News, Ahmedabad. Maharashtra has set a new record yesterday in vaccinating citizens for COVID-19 vaccine. As per the COVID portal, around 5,60,000 citizens were inoculated in the state yesterday. More details from our Mumbai correspondent. On the first day after resuming vaccination for the age group of 18 to 29 in government hospitals, Maharashtra has set new record by vaccinating 5,59,345 citizens in one day. Yesterday, 4,84,000 beneficiaries received first jab and around 75,000 received the second jab. Earlier, 5,34,000 beneficiaries were vaccinated on 26 April 2021. Till date, the state has observed more than 2 crore 86 lakh doses, out of which 2 crore 30 lakh beneficiaries have received first dose and 56 lakh have received the second dose. In Mumbai, more than 48 lakh 66 thousand beneficiaries are inoculated, while in Pune, 38 lakh 84 thousand doses are observed. Jeevan Bhausar, AI News, Mumbai. In Tamil Nadu, the number of fresh COVID cases came down to 6,895. Over 13,000 COVID patients recovered. A total of 194 deaths were reported. More than 56,000 patients are under treatment for the pandemic. Over 1,50,000 samples were tested in the last 24 hours. In Chennai, fresh COVID cases counted below 500 and stood at 410. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says reforms with conviction and incentives can improve the lives of the poor and the middle class and improve the ease of doing business. Center State Bhagidari helped the states raise an extra 1.06 lakh crores in 2020-21 amid the financial crunch across the world. Nation's total COVID vaccination coverage crosses 29.4 crore mark. Recovery rate improves to 96.5%. Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan says more than 20 countries have shown interest in the CoWin platform for help in vaccination campaigns. Farooq Abdullah and Mehbooba Mufti to attend tomorrow's all-party meeting called by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar calls for a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire in Afghanistan at the UN Security Council. Country receives 31% excess rainfall during this monsoon, says IMD. Prime Minister's Man Ki Baat to be broadcast by All India Radio on the 27th of June. In cricket, India to resume play with overnight score of 64 for 2 against New Zealand in the World Test Championship final at Southampton. And in the Euro Cup soccer, England defeat the Czech Republic 1-0 while Croatia beat Scotland 3-1 to reach the last 16. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. The People's Alliance for Gupkar Declaration, PAGD, yesterday announced that a team headed by Dr. Farooq Abdullah and comprising PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti and Amalgam's spokesperson Mohammad Yusuf Tarigami will attend the all-party meeting called by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi tomorrow. Dr. Abdullah, who heads the Amalgam, 
met the media in Srinagar after the meeting of the PAGD leaders at his residence. He said that they have received invitation from the Prime Minister and they are going to attend the meeting. Dr. Faru, Chief of National Conference NC and Member of Parliament from Srinagar said they are confident that they will put their stand before the Prime Minister and the Home Minister. The PAGD is an alliance of six parties in Jammu and Kashmir, including the NC and the PDP, formed in the aftermath of the Government of India's August 2019 decision to nullify Article 370 and split JNK into two union territories. The group's public stand is for the restoration of the special status of the state of JNK. External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar yesterday said it is crucial for international community to press for permanent and comprehensive ceasefire in Afghanistan to ensure immediate reduction in violence and protection of civilians. Speaking at the UNSC debate on UN assistance mission in Afghanistan, Dr. Jay Shankar said, intra-Afghan talks have not resulted in a reduction of violence in Afghanistan. Dr. Jay Shankar reiterated India's support for an inclusive, Afghan-led, Afghan-owned and Afghan-controlled peace process. He said for enduring peace in Afghanistan, terrorist safe havens and sanctuaries must be dismantled immediately and their supply chains disrupted. India has expressed regret that Pakistan has once again misused an international platform for making unfounded and irresponsible allegations against India. Exercising right of reply to Pakistan's statement at the 47th session of the UN Human Rights Council, India said Pakistan has been doing this only to distract the Council's attention from the deplorable human rights situation in Pakistan. Pawan Kumar Badhe, First Secretary at Permanent Mission of India at the UNHRC, said the plight of minorities in Pakistan is evident from their shrinking size. He said forced conversions have become daily phenomenon in Pakistan and there are reports of minor girls of religious minorities being abducted, raped, forcibly converted and married. Over a thousand girls belonging to religious minorities are forcibly converted in Pakistan every year. He stated that Pakistan as its state policy continues to provide pensions to dreaded and listed terrorists and host them on its territory. India said it is high time that Pakistan is held accountable for aiding and abetting terrorism. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people in the country and abroad in the Man Ki Baat program on All India Radio on the 27th of this month. It will be the 78th episode of the monthly radio program. The Prime Minister has invited people to share their ideas on topics he should address on the coming episode of the program. People can share their views in the Namo app or MyGov open forum. They can also dial the toll-free telephone number 1-800-117-800 and record their message for the Prime Minister in either Hindi or English. People can also give a missed call on 1922 and follow the link received in SMS to directly give their suggestions to the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will interact with participants of Toykathon 2021 tomorrow via video conferencing. Toykathon 2021 was jointly launched by the Ministry of Education, WCD Ministry, MSME Ministry, DPIIT, Textile Ministry, INB Ministry and AICTE on 5th January this year to crowdsource innovative toys and games ideas. Around 1.2 lakh participants from across India registered and submitted more than 17,000 ideas for the Toykathon 2021, out of which 1,567 ideas have been shortlisted for the three days online Toykathon grand finale being held from 22nd June to 24th June. Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Piyush Goel said, that the first phase of the National Single Window System for Industrial Clearances and Approvals will be launched soon. He said this while chairing a review meeting yesterday. The digital platform will allow investors to identify and apply for various pre-operations approvals required for commencing a business in India. Mr. Goel said that there will be 17 ministries and departments and 14 states on board in the first phase. 
Mr. Goel expressed hope that it will be a seamless interface. BJP President Jagat Prakash Nadda has given a message to all the office bearers of the Kisan Morcha to act as a bridge between the schemes of the government and the people. Addressing the Kisan Morcha office bearers meeting of the BJP in New Delhi, Mr. Nadda said that there is a difference between responsibility and position. Mr. Nadda said BJP has started e-chintan programs and on the same pattern, BJP Kisan Morcha should organize e-chintan on different subjects with the state executive members every 15 days. He said Prime Minister Narendra Modi has taken various initiatives in the interest of farmers in just seven years, which were not taken in the period of 70 years. The Indian Med Department IMD says India has received 31% excess rainfall during the monsoon season so far. The Weather Department has said that India gauged 13.78 cm precipitation against the normal of 10.05 cm till June 21st. However, in the remaining areas of the country, including Delhi, parts of Rajasthan, Haryana and Punjab, there is little chance of it moving further in the next seven days. Talking to AIR News, IMD DG said, due to the western disturbance, there may be heavy rain in the western Himalayan region and adjoining areas of northwest India for the next five days. This year, the monsoon so far has been good for the country as a whole. The monsoon rainfall during June so far has been excess by about 31% as compared to long period average. The rainfall has been well distributed across the country except the northeastern state. During next seven days, we are expecting the rainfall to decrease over northwest and central India. However, normal rainfall activity will continue over eastern India and rainfall activity will increase over northeastern state. Today is Olympic Day. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has tweeted that on this day, he appreciates all those who have represented India in various Olympics over the years. He said our nation is proud of their contributions to sports and their efforts towards motivating other athletes. In Sports Roundup, All India Radio brings the latest news updates in national and international sports arena throughout the day. With 31 days to go for Tokyo Olympic Games, All India Radio will focus on young female shooter Elevenil Valerivan. Born in Tamil Nadu, Elevenil Valerivan started her shooting journey from the Shamskar Dham shooting range. She went on to refine her game at the Gagan Narang Academy. I met Gagan sir for training in 2017. The first time when I trained with him, it kind of changed my whole uh, viewpoint of the game. She struck gold at the 2019 ISSF 10-meter air rifle World Cup at Rio de Janeiro. I won my first senior World Cup medal in Rio 2019 and I won my second World Cup finals medal in Putian uh, 2019. So after winning that Putian gold medal, I became the world number one. Ilave Anil's medal run began in 2018 when she won the gold medal at the Junior World Cup and silver at the World University Games in 2019. She won the gold medal in the Junior World Cup held in Suhail in 2019. Ilave Anil won her maiden gold medal in the 10-meter air pistol senior category at the Asian Air Gun Championship in Taipei. This is Sports Desk AIR News. In other sports news, in cricket, India finished the 50 at 64 for 2 with a lead of 32 runs against New Zealand in the World Test Championship final at Southampton. Earlier, resuming their score at 101 for 2, New Zealand made 249 runs. Yesterday, rain delayed the start of play by an hour. Good weather is forecast for day 6, but if no win is possible in a maximum of 98 overs, the two teams will be crowned joint winners. In the Euro 2020 Soccer Group D match at Wembley, England defeated the Czech Republic 1-0 to reach the last 16 while topping the group. England will now take on runner-up from Group F at Wembley on June 29th. The final Group F games take place on Wednesday with Germany facing Hungary and Portugal playing France. In another Group D game, Scotland's dream of making history by progressing to knockout stage came to an end with a heartbreaking 3-1 defeat by Croatia at Hampden. In Copa America Soccer, Lionel Messi earned a record equaling 147th cap for Argentina as they progressed to the quarterfinals with victory over Paraguay. 
Sports Minister Kiren Rijeju has criticized the unfair COVID-19 restrictions for Indian athletes in Tokyo. With the pandemic still raging, the Tokyo organizers have prescribed stricter regulations for travelers from 11 countries, including India, for the Games beginning July 23rd. The Indian athletes and officials have been asked by the Japanese government to undergo daily COVID-19 tests for a week prior to their departure and not interact with anyone from another country for three days upon arrival, strictures that have left the Indian Olympic Association fuming. And now let us take a look at the weather forecast for the day. Both Jammu and Kashmir will have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. The minimum temperature in Jammu was 25 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 39 degrees. In Srinagar, the temperatures will hover between 14 and 29 degrees Celsius. Lay will have partly cloudy sky. The minimum and maximum temperature will be between 7 and 20 degrees Celsius. Gilgit, the temperatures will hover between 16 and 34 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad, the minimum temperature was 20 degrees and the maximum will be around 38 degrees Celsius. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Almost all newspapers today lead with the all-party meeting convened by the Prime Minister scheduled for tomorrow. PAGD will attend meeting with Modi. Leaders may push for full statehood. Restoration of Article 370 writes the statesman. On the vaccination front, Covaxin submits Phase 3 data to expert panel. Claims 78% efficacy is a lead in the Hindustan Times. While the Financial Express under the caption Big Shot writes, Pfizer in final stages to get India not for vax. Rejecting the objections raised by a parent's body as well as students, SE refuses to intervene with class 12 assessment, writes the pioneer. With work from home here to stay, quoting a research report, the Financial Express headline reads, one-third workers globally to work remotely by 2022. And finally, in a bid to rehabilitate women selling unregulated liquor, the Indian Express has an inspiring story. Tips to start new business loans in Jharkhand, women selling liquor to feed family have way out. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says reforms with conviction and incentives have improved the lives of the poor and the middle class and improved the ease of doing business. Centre State Bhagidari helped the states raise an extra 1.06 lakh crores in 2020-21 amid financial crunch across the world. Nation's total COVID vaccination coverage crosses 29.4 crore mark. Recovery rate improves to 96.5%. Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan says more than 20 countries have shown interest in the COVID platform for help in vaccination campaigns. Farooq Abdullah and Mehbooba Mufti to attend tomorrow's all-party meeting called by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi. External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar calls for a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire in Afghanistan at UN Security Council. Country receives 31% excess rainfall during this monsoon, says IMD. Prime Minister's Man Ki Baat to be broadcast by All India Radio on 27th of June. In cricket, India to resume play with overnight score of 64 for 2 against New Zealand in the World Test Championship final at Southampton. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.